A DPAC is a collection of assets for procedural generation. And in SPOC, we have a lot more possibilities for these assets to contribute to the procedural generation than we had in Simple Sci-Fi. So we're gonna be specifically going over all of that. I've got the checklist here in case that you just referred back to this video for the quick checklist to see if you are covered or not. And now we're gonna go into all of these details. At the most basic level, a DPAC is just going to have a bunch of collections and these collections are gonna have assets in them. And you can name the collections for a theme such as like windows or doors. And then the entire DPAC might be named for a theme for all of those collections put together. One of the first things we want to make sure is covered is that everything has a, all their transforms applied. You don't want them to have rotation or scale or anything. Just make sure that all of the objects in, in the collection and all of the uh, child objects of those objects all have their transforms applied. Next, we want to make sure that their origins are set. There are some things inside Spock that will try to set the origins for you, but if you have these origins preset, then it's going to be a lot more consistent and, and have less issues. So what you want to do is you want to have, make sure that you have a parent object and then it has a bottom Z origin set. I happen to have a, uh, a quick button for this. And then if you have any children, you want to make sure they have the same origin. So you see how this one has a different origin. That's going to throw things off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to all these and I'm going to clear their parent. And now I'm going to go to what's going to be the parent and I'm going to set the cursor to selected. That's going to put the cursor at its origin, which is already at bottom Z. I'm going to select the objects that need to be parented to it or that are children of it, select the parent last, control P, and we will parent to that object. What we want to do is make sure that their origins are set to, we'll say set origin, and we will say origin to 3D cursor. Now, if I select those individual items, everybody has the same origin, and that's exactly what we want. That will ensure consistent placement of this object with its children. Next, let's make sure that we have the proper names on this. If you happen to use the old simple sci-fi names that start with a BOT underscore or a top underscore, such as this, BOT underscore, and we'll say uh, wall surface, this will work. Uh, doing the top designation will also work. So top underscore boxes. And these were simple sci-fi designation, the, the prefixes of bot the underscore and top underscore. And then in Spock, we have the new designation of uh, SP underscore. So SP underscore. These, oh, I'm going to go ahead and rename that. So SP underscore windows. And these will not have any impact on what actually occurs. It's just so that Spock knows what collections to grab out of a blend file. It's going to look for collections that have these prefixes, bot, top, and SP underscore. And those are the only ones that it's gonna pull from the blend file. So if you have a scene in there, and you know maybe a scene collection and things, it's not going to pull those in. It knows to only grab the collections and objects associated with these names. If you do not have these names on there, it's not going to find it. Last of the requirements is we want to make sure that we have a folder that is named for the DPAC, and I'll call this Alley. And in that folder, we wanna make sure that we have the blend file is named the same as the folder. It would also be nice for everybody if you made sure that it is compressed, and we'll say save. Once that is there, your DPAC can be distributed to other people. Just zip up that folder and they can drop it into their custom DPACs folder. You can see here that I've got a DPACs folder. This is my custom DPACs folder. Now I've got Alley as one of the options. So this leads into our first bonus thing that because obviously we now have all the basic requirements are set for this to load in, but we are now missing a thumbnail. So that is the first 
nice thing for somebody to add is add a thumbnail. In order to add a thumbnail, you want to create a square image that is the same name as your dpack with .png. And here you can see we've got gin nasa .blend, gin nasa png. Uh, they don't have to have the gin prefix, but anything that has the PNG with the same name as the blend, it's going to pick that up and show it as a thumbnail. If you don't have a thumbnail, you'll just end up having this default thumbnail that represents the D pack. Next up, that's nice in the bonus area is material variation. So as we place hundreds, if not thousands of instances of this thing, having letting it have a variation per instance starts to become important for it to just have have an interesting look overall. You can have things like this one where it tiles the images that are related to it. So every time I do an instance, it actually has some other possibilities uh, randomized of what it's going to be. So, you know, it keeps it looking a little interesting and just adds a lot of value for a single asset. So I've done that with these stickers. Those are kind of fun. And then I've got uh, posters. And I, I put all these together all in one collection. They're just random stuff that goes on a surface. But, you know, besides just packing these, you know, instead of these just being static as they are, each one has variations that it goes through. When you get Spock that will come with some materials that are used for this and you can copy how those are done. Variation in the materials, pretty nice thing to do, pretty fun. Um, I'll show you one more example. I've got on both this neon sign, I've got a random emission. Another possibility we built in is kind of experimental. It's the ability to have randomization with something like geometry nodes. So I've got this single inst this single object is instance across a plane and I have some randomization as to its height. And you can see how that's done here. It uses the self object and some randomization in order to change the, the transform scale on Z. Uh, and it, that's based on location. That's why there's a pattern there, but if you apply this to some some objects such as maybe skyscrapers for a city or you know anything else that you want some slight variations to its geometry, that could be kind of interesting and fun to do. I definitely recommend testing it thoroughly because it might be a little too heavy to instance a lot. It depends on how much you've got going on in a scene, but we do have that capability here. Next, we can go over another special case, which is using wireframes. We already went over how you can do parents and children that share the same origin so that they're placed together. But when you have a object that is a wireframe, it can be used in a different, in a few different ways. For one thing, it's automatically ignored when it comes to rendering and uh, casting shadows or anything like that. So the visibility is going to be, it's going to carry over to all of its instances. And when it comes to rendering, it's not going to show up anywhere. But you can use these in various ways. You can use it as the parent so that you can set a custom bounding box that maybe has an extra margin on top or something. And it's going to ignore all of the children for the bounding box. So if you use a wireframe bounding box, you can basically set a custom bounding box that everything packs according to. Uh, let's say it needs extra space above it or something like that. Uh, you can build that into the object and that will be a way of doing like a custom origin that is specific to that object. Another trick you can do is have the wireframe as a child so that it can stick through a surface and you can use that as in an avoid collection or maybe you want to use those later to uh, set up booleans such as for this door you want it to cut into that surface. Lastly, I'd say for any extras is if you want to set up a scene for people to use, it might be nice. So because we're using blend files as dpacks, you can include a basic scene, make sure that your orphan data is gone, 
So uh, we actually have that tool inside of the thing. Just hit clean all data. And if you save it like this, it's going to leave people with something they can use when it comes to, you know, quickly being able to play with it. And it's not going to interfere with your DPAC being imported. It just, you know, giving something people can quickly play with can be nice. You can give them default settings. These, these all will save into the scene. So if you give them something where they can just hit it, select something, or maybe it's already selected and they hit pack, that could get them started very quickly and quickly be uh, happy with the D pack that they uh, got from you. That's it. Let me know in discord if there's anything that you'd like to see added to this and I'll see you online.